Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Sick Eric back again with another video and today we're going to be doing a quick comparison between the LG G8 ThinQ and the Samsung Galaxy S10. Now this is the regular S10. I've seen a lot of videos of people comparing the G8 to the S10 Plus and I think the S10 is more a, of a better comparison because they're the same size and uh, they're more, uh, I guess, comparable rather than comparing it to the S10 Plus, which is bigger. It has a couple different, a uh, couple extra cameras on it, on the front at least. So I think this is a perfect uh, comparison between two different devices because they're both pretty much the exact same size. So let's get down into it. Uh, this is the LG G8 and this is the Samsung Galaxy S10. A little bit of a price difference. The LG G8 on T-Mobile is about $620 while the S10 is um, about $899, if I'm not mistaken. S10 Plus, about 1000 and the S10e is about 750 So let's get down into it. Both the devices are very similar, but then also very different in their own way. They both have the Snapdragon 855 processor. The LG G8 over here has... 6 gigabytes of RAM while the S10 has 10 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, both have the same amount of storage on board. So on the LG G8, you got a display of 6.1 inches. And it has, it's a POLED display, uh, which means it's a plastic substrate, I guess, display. Uh, it's got a resolution of 1440 by 3120. And it has 564 pixels per inch uh, while on the Galaxy S10 you also have a 6.1 inch display let's go ahead and check out the size differences here so pretty much almost identical of course they have different implementations of the notch you have the notch over here on LG over here on Samsung you got the Infinity O display both of them are pretty good uh, the notch is a little bit more intrusive than the cutout. I prefer the cutout, but it is what it is. Two different types of displays. Over here on the Samsung, you got a 6.1 inch dynamic AMOLED display. You got a resolution of 1440 by 3040 and 550 pixels per inch. So you got a little bit more of, a, of pixels per inch over here on the LG than you do on the Samsung device, but they are pretty close in resolution as you can see right there, you might have a better resolution, higher resolution over here on the G8 than you do on the Samsung, but it's not by a lot. Um, the Samsung is covered in Corning Gorilla Glass 6, while the LG is covered in Gorilla Glass 5. Not much of a difference. Um, 6 is going to scratch a little bit more easier, but it's not prone to breakage. Uh, 5 is a little bit prone to breakage, probably scratch around the same. Uh, all of these phones scratch pretty easily. Um, over here on the Samsung device, you have HDR10 Plus capability, while on the LG G8, you have Dolby Vision and just regular HDR10. Uh, Size-wise, as far as the body goes, on the LG G8, you have 5.9 inches tall, um, 2.83 inches wide, and 0.33 inches thick. As you can see right there, pretty similar in size. While on the Galaxy S10, you have a 5.90 inches tall, uh, 2.7 inches wide, and 0.31 inches thin. So it's a little bit thinner than the LG G8. About the same size as far as body. The G8 is a little bit taller, as you can see right there and a little bit, they're about the same with LG being a little bit wider. And as far as thickness goes, you can see the LG is a little bit thicker than the S10. Uh, they both have Android 9 running out of the box. Of course, Samsung has their One UI um, on top of Android, which is their skin. And I personally uh, find this a lot more pleasing and a lot more nicer to view everything is just you know easy easily accessible on the S10 uh, the LG 
you have their LG UX 8.0 skin on top of their Android 9, which uh, it can be a little dated, but there's really nothing wrong with it. It's just personal preference. Um, personally, I wish either one of these could create a uh, full stock Google um, interface. That'll be awesome. Adreno 640 on both of the devices. Um, on the S10, you have eight gigabytes of RAM with 128 gigabytes of internal storage and they both offer micro SD card expansion up here up to 512 gigabytes and then on the LG you have the micro SD card slot down here on the side Samsung is at top so very similar in specs uh, they both perform great um, none of these phones are slow by any means they are both very very fast and very snappy uh, both of these devices have the Adreno 640 GPU, so uh, really good as far as uh, playing games and graphics and stuff. No issues whatsoever on any of these devices. Now, going on to the cameras, here's where things get a little bit interesting. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start with the LG G8. Go ahead and set the Samsung down. So on the LG G8, you got a two camera setup. On the rear, uh, the first main sensor is a 12 megapixel f1.5 sensor and it has optical image stabilization and autofocus and records up to 4K 60 frames per second. The second, the second sensor is a 16 megapixel f1.9 ultra ride with a 107 degree field of view. Uh, no optical Im image stabilization on that one. I don't think so very very similar in cameras uh, the front facing camera is an 8 megapixel f1.7 autofocus uh, sensor and it records up to 1080p 60 frames per second and you also have a time of flight sensor which is embedded into this notch up here at tops it's what LG is calling their 3d uh, Z camera which helps with facial recognition uh, air motion and their hand ID and you're also um, you also have 3d facial recognition which is just as good as Apple's on this device the LG and it can read your face even in the dark so really really cool extra things right there that the LG has as far as facial recognition and security so going on over to the Samsung you have a different camera setup you have a three camera setup on the rear um, the first camera is a 12 megapixel f1.5 uh, dual aperture. It also switches to an f2.4 on the Samsung and that's the main sensor and they've had this ever since the S9 and then the Note 9 and now we have it on the S10 so really really cool there. Uh, you also have autofocus and optical image stabilization and you can record 4K up to 60 frames per second as well. Uh, the second one is a telephoto lens at 12 megapixels with an aperture f2.4 and you, that allows you to have two times optical zoom with autofocus and OIS. The third camera is a 16 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide camera with a 120 degree field of view. So you have a uh, wider field of view with the uh, Samsung uh, camera. As you can see right there, you have a wider field of view with the Samsung regular and then telephoto, you get to zoom in a little bit. So you have different options as far as fields of view with the Samsung device. On the LG device, um, you just have the, the two uh, regular and then the 107 field of view with the LG which is perfectly fine for me. I really don't care for telephoto lenses. Um, as far as zooming in, I prefer just having a regular lens and a wide angle lens. Uh, with that being said, going on over to the sound area. Now both of these devices have special sounds on them. Uh, the Samsung, you have uh, Dolby Atmos on board. And this has different sound settings for movie music and voice. While on the uh, LG, you have different sounds as far as DTS goes, uh, sound quality effects, 
you have your quad DAC, 32-bit quad DAC on the LG G8, which offers top of the line um, audio when it comes to plugging in your headphones at the bottom. The Samsung, the audio is just fine. It's not going to blow you away, but the audio on the LG G8 is definitely a lot better. Uh, as far as external sound, uh, they both have stereo speakers. Uh, the Samsung uses the earpiece up here as a secondary speaker, and then you also have the bottom firing speaker here at the bottom. And then the LG G8 is using what they're calling the crystal OLED sound, which means the sound uh, comes from the back of the display around here. And then you also have the boombox speaker down here at the bottom. So two different types of stereo speakers, uh, two uh, implementations, different implementations of each one. As far as battery goes, this Samsung has a um, 3400 milliamp hour battery, while the LG has a 3500 milliamp hour battery. Uh, both have quick charge 3.0 and both have fast charging and fast wireless charging as well. The advantage the S10 has over the LG is that it offers reverse wireless charging, which means you just put your phone down and you can charge either your smartwatch, uh, the Galaxy Buds, or another phone on top of here if you choose so. Let's go ahead and check that out. And let's see if we can get this to work. Uh, where is it at? So, wireless chair. So we're going to put it down on there, and then we're going to set the LG on there. And as you can see, it is charging it. Really cool feature. Uh, if you want to impress your friends, I wish the LG had it. But it's just a feature there, really not that serious. That is one advantage the Samsung does have over the LG. Um, as, far, as far as features go, they both are very feature-packed uh, devices on the Samsung. You have the ultrasonic in-display fingerprint sensor uh, inside the display, which is really, really cool. Uh, in my opinion, it does work really good. I've heard a lot of people saying that it's really finicky and it doesn't really work too well. While the LG has a typical, more reliable uh, capacitive fingerprint on the rear. As far as facial recognition and security, the LG has a 3D facial recognition while the Samsung just has a 2D using the front facing camera. So the LG is a little bit more secure in that area. Uh, the LG also has what they are calling their uh, hand ID. So if you were to place your hand on top, you are able to unlock your device without touching it. Samsung doesn't really have mm -hmm. anything like that. Uh, their uh, feature is the in-display fingerprint sensor. And then uh, you both still can have uh, pins or passwords on here as well to unlock your device. The LG also has knock code, which means you're able to type on the display several different places to unlock your device as well. As far as other features on the LG G8, you get the boombox speaker, which is at the bottom. And what this uses is the uh, resonance chamber, the insides of the device to amplify the sound. So if you put it on a desk, it'll amplify the sound a little bit more. And then you also have that front facing uh, sound coming from the display. The Samsung over here has stereo speakers, which in my opinion does sound a little bit clearer and louder than the LG, just more detail, but the LG still has pretty good sound um, regardless. They both have um, Bluetooth 5.0. Uh, they both have USB type C charging at the bottom. Uh, they both have always on displays. As you can see right there, different types of always on displays, but they both have always on displays. The Samsung has Wi Fi 6, which is a little bit faster. Uh, I'm not sure which version the LG has, but I'm sure it's not Wi Fi 6. Uh, the Samsung does record uh, HDR10 Plus recording and playback, while the LG is just going to do your regular HDR10 playback. Uh, both the devices are IP68 water and dust resistant, and the LG, like I said, has the fingerprint sensor on the back, while the Samsung has it underneath the display. Now, the Samsung is really cool 
it has different you know features that make it really cool but then the lg also has its little you know tricks up its sleeve as well you know with the facial recognition the hand id and the air motion gestures which i do not use as far as colors go the samsung comes in several different colors you get the prism white which is this color right here you get a, a prism black prism prism green prism blue and a flamingo pink with the samsung device on the lg you get the platinum gray aurora black moroccan blue and the carmine red which is this color right here here in the states you're probably just going to get the platinum gray the black and the red this is a t-mobile uh, exclusive version I guess color you want to call it but both the devices are really really good uh, they're both really really fast uh, no issues here now as far as you know which one's the best um, I'm not gonna say like this one's better than this one they're both really really good devices they both offer their you know unique features in different ways uh, as far as size goes let's go ahead and do a quick size comparison on the two as you can see, the backs, very similar, glass on glass construction with the metal frame. The LG is a bit taller than the Samsung, just by a little. Uh, they both have aluminum sides. You get more of a grip over here on the LG since it does not have that curved display like the Samsung does. So no accidental presses over here on the LG G8. Uh, both of them have buttons on the left hand side, volume rocker, the G8 does have a dedicated Google Assistant, while the Samsung has a remappable Bixby button. On the bottom they both have 3.5mm headphone jacks, which is really nice. Uh, they both have USB Type-C and the bottom firing speaker as well. Right hand side, on the Samsung you get the power button which is a little bit higher and a little bit, in my opinion, too high compared to the more reachable uh, area on the LG G8. G8 also has the SIM micro SD card slot over here. Up top, you have the micro SD card SIM card slot on the Samsung, and both the devices have a mic up here as well. We could quit getting some accidental touches on the LG. And on the back, they are different as well. The LG has a fingerprint sensor, two cameras. You do have a camera bump on the Samsung versus the no camera bump on the LG, which is a really, really nice feature. But the Samsung's is not too bad, as you can see right there. So really, really not too bad. Uh, the only disadvantage that gives that to the LG G8 is that it is very slippery. You set this on the table, it will just slide on off. So get a case if you're going to get either one of these devices, but especially for the LG G8, get a case. Trust me, you don't want to break your phone. But both of these devices are really, really excellent. Um, a lot of people are saying that the LG can't compete with the Samsung, but, you know, it's still a really, really good phone, uh, especially for the price, $620 compared to uh, $900 on the Samsung S10. And you get a lot of features. You get an excellent display. Um, uh, both of these displays are AMOLED. They both look really, really nice. Deep blacks, just really, really nice displays. The Samsung might have a better display, but the LG is no slouch. It really comes in at second, and it really has a nice display. So a lot of these phones, both of these phones offer a lot of features. Um, they're just different as far as price goes. The LG does have a couple different useless gimmicks on there with the hand id and the air motion while the samsung just keeps it real they have these in display um ultrasonic fingerprint sensor kind of a gimmick but it does work and uh, it may not work as well as your traditional capacitive fingerprint sensor but it is really cool to have uh, you have the uh, reverse wireless charging on the samsung you have a better implementation of the notch on the Samsung versus the notch on the uh, LG, you have the hole punch cutout right here. Prefer that a lot better compared to the notch up here, but the notch on the LG is there for a reason to house all of those sensors, so that's fine. I'll give it a pass on that. With that being said, guys, if you got any questions, 
post them down below in the comments. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Hope you enjoyed this video comparing the LG G8 and the Samsung Galaxy S10. Two excellent devices. You can't go wrong with either or. Um, excellent performance, excellent displays, excellent sound quality, and just overall really good uh, flagship devices for this year right now. So don't forget to subscribe. Hit that little notification bell to get uh, future uh, notifications on my future videos. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.